Warning. Dissolving on sodium hydroxide is exothermic. Diethyl ether is highly flammable. All of experiments should be performed in the fume hood. Thanks. Hmm, basically, why not? I will try it. Salut, my dear chemists, and welcome back to Akantharak's channel. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a dibutyl diglime or dibutyl carbitol. First, let me introduce you what it actually is. Yes, simply it's just an diglime or diethylene glycol butyl ester. Later I'll call it just DBD. Despite its simplicity, this ester has a lot of interesting properties and applications. DBD is insoluble in water and don't coordinate most of platinum group metal cations at all, especially palladium. Therefore, it could be used as internal standards in Suzuki Miyara coupling reactions, as a high boiling solvent, and the major point it's the best gold extractor. Just imagine about 490 grams of tetrachloragold acid could be dissolved in 1 liter of DBD. Selectively, without any precious metal traces, with 99 effectiveness. Oh my god! Also, dibutyl diglime using in rare earth metal like europium, terbium, extracting from solutions in concentrated nitric acid. Before starting any of percentages, I should say yes. It may be just bought in some of chemical markets. Nevertheless, in recalculation of my loadings, I made from 0.5 dollars reagents and 1 dollar substance which isn't as bad, even if I didn't mention some commercial moments, we're here to explore the science, so let's go. In two next 50 ml flask I put a stir bar, then add 2.4 grams of the ethylene glycol. Further I prepare a 15% solution from 1808 grams of sodium hydroxide and pour it into glycol. Sodium diethylene glycolate instantly precipitates out. Thereafter, I put the whole construction into silicon oil bath for even heating. Of course, controlling temperature. Now it needs to be aerated by argon or nitrogen with vigorous stirring during 30 minutes at 60 degrees C. After time is gone, I have added 3.47 grams of tetrabutyl ammonium bromide TBAPE, as phase transfer catalyst. Then I have just closed one neck with a rubber septum and changed a balloon with pipette to another tap equipped one. At last, 8.36 grams of butyl chloride is added through the septum with a simple syringe. So, what's happened in our reaction mixture? Sodium diglycolate just takes part in essential nucleophilic substitution of chlorine atom in butyl chloride, mediated and catalyzed by quaternary butyl ammonium bromide. This salt has both aliphatic and hydrophilic parts, so the first one helps to integrate layers between each other. Oh yeah, the reaction time should be laid between 4 or 6 hours, depending on your scale. Not as long, but pretty boring. Let's go to see a small time lapse of reaction. Reaction stops when T babe starts to crystallize out at the top layer. After reaction stops, I put the whole stuff into separator funnel. Then add about 25 ml of water and shake it pretty well. Now you can see three layers. So the first one contains half of butyl chloride, because it was in the excess, and DBD. The second one is wet dibutyl diglime, bottom layer is just water containing all linear organic salts. I'm gonna to chop off a medium and top layers into different vials. Mm, 
Now wash off with water layer a couple of times with the ethyl ether and dry it under anhydrous magnesium sulfate. Interesting fact, wet DPT is immiscible with ether? Finally, I have filtered the dryer off through 100 porous glass filter by hands and spinning liquid on rotatory. Hmm, smells like celery. Great, we successfully made a pretty pure dibutyl diglime and it was proved by NMR spectroscopy in deuterated acetone. Let's go to top spin program. Here you can see a triplet of CH3 fragment system of two methylene groups, nearby oxygen butyl, CH2 fragment, and of course system for glycol parts. Nevertheless, some impurities here. It's not a reagent, not ether, nor a monoester. I assume it came from a rotatory nozzle or from a stir bar because stuff we synthesize in our lab is pretty insoluble in anything and very hard to clean. Of course, DBD could be purified using vacuum distillation, but I have no reason to eat for such a small amount of product. I would manage to make a video with large scale synthesis with testing my DBD in gold extraction process, but guys, for it I really need your financial or YouTube help to make this video as popular as it's possible, thanks to you in advance. To sum up, I have made about 1 gram of pretty pure DBD and additional 2.7 grams of less clean product from a top layer, which corresponds to 57% yield. Don't worry, it would be higher about 80%, but as you know, less loadings leads to a greater loss. Finally, I decided to make some qualitative tests. First, I have dissolved a little handful of europium oxide in concentrated nitric acid. Then add a DBD. Shake it well and you could see a peach color intermediate complex of europium that has weak fluorescence. In a split second it becomes yellow again. Second test isn't as demonstrative but I have made it. I put a small grain of palladium dichloride in concentrated hydrochloric acid and added remaining DBD. As you can see, the bottom layer becomes darker, but the butyl diglime still a little bit yellowish as it was. Ok, today I have shown you how to make a dibutyl carbital from common organic reagents. Tell me in comment section if you'd like to see a large scale video with gold extracting procedure. So if this video was helpful, put likes, leave comments, crack the bell and subscribe to Akansarek's channel. Bye bye!